Hello everyone, I am Kalyuf and I'm finally back after about two months of a break. And uh, this time it is my first impressions of, of course, the new uh, 2021 Season 1, a brand new GT3 car, the Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evo. And you know what, I this car definitely surprises me. Of course, this season it will be used in IMSA and VRS, which is basically, again, the very popular series. Before the video begins, I, this channel is all about iRacing guides, tutorials, gameplay, special events and sim racing gear review. Please leave a like, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and share this video with your mates. But let's stop talking and get straight into it. Before we get into how the car drives, let's just talk about the basics of this car. This Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evo is around 4 4550 millimeters in length and 2050 millimeters wide. The wheelbase is 2645 millimeters long. This car has a 5.2 uh, liter V10 producing around 500 brake horsepower and it weighs around 1411 kg uh, when the car has 50% uh, fuel and of course with the driver. So compared to the other GT3 cars available, it is it definitely doesn't have the most horsepower and it actually is quite heavy compared to the other GT3 cars. So this is definitely more of a handling car. That's I think that's all about the basics. Let's talk about the handling. So, first of all, let's talk about how the car feels when you drive it. Uh, first of all, um, understeer, oversteer. So, when I'm driving this car, this car is just really responsive, quite pointy, and it doesn't wiggle too much. It doesn't have much oversteer, I notice. Even when you put down the power, it doesn't really have oversteer. Um, maybe it has a tiny bit of understeer when you start to brake in and turning in, but that can be resolved uh, with a better braking technique. Next up, it is accelerating and braking. So in terms of accelerating, the car is just really planted and you start accelerating out of a corner, the car doesn't do any sort of wheel spin or just any kind of just oversteer, you can easily correct it even if you have um, a bit of oversteer. In terms of braking, this is, I would say, a little bit trickier. Right now, uh, when your brake bias is set to 50% to around 52-53%, the car will basically just spin uh, under braking. So you just have to change that brake bias to around 53.5 or above, which is like 54 for safe. Uh, this issue will be basically eliminated. So apart from this issue, the car, again, it's just really stable under braking. Therefore, I would say it's quite easy to drive. Next, it is suspension, of course, and how it reacts to curbs. To be honest, the curbs are basically nothing for this car. It really is nothing. Uh, when the Lambo run over the curbs, the car is so stable. Really, I told you, this car, it is a handling car. And uh, so you can accelerate really easily and that's why you don't get wheel spin you don't get oversteer because it absorbed the curbs the energy is so good and yeah it, it, it's so planted so it is is it easy to drive on a scale from one to ten from which one is of course the easiest and ten is the hardest honestly one really this car is really really easy to drive it's basically Probably easier than the Ferrari 488 GT3 or just level pegging with the Ferrari GT uh, 488 GT3. And if you compare it to last season with the Chevrolet Corvette CAR, which I said, it's pretty easy to drive. This is actually easier than that car and it's so fun as well. So let's talk about the dashboard, the uh, HUD. There are four display modes for this uh, Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evo, which is day, night, 
Magnus qualify and day uh, and qualify. So day and night mode is basically the same with just only the difference being the background color being white and dark gray or just dark color respectively. On the top left, uh, top left we got the traction control, engine map, throttle shape, and then we got. It shows you what gear you're in. Next, it is some just I don't know some unchangeable numbers of the car and then right hand side of that we got the ABS of course. So further down we of course got the speed of the car as well as the RPM of the engine. A bit further down we got the current lap time and the delta. At last at the bottom row we got different temperature indicators, uh, use of fuel per lap and the fuel used overall. So let's go to the Magnus quality mode uh, first. At the top is pretty much the same, just arranging in, I would say, a slightly different order with and with the addition of the RPM there. Then a bit lower is the lap time, speed, and the delta. And a little bit further than, uh, down, it's uh, we have the tire pressures and the temperatures as well as the gear you're in. And at the bottom, it is the same as day and night mode with different temperatures and the fuel used. Last but not least, we have the quality mode. So at the top, it is same as the other modes. And then a bit further down, we of course got the lap time, speed and delta, same as the Ma uh, Magnus quality mode. And then a little bit further down, we have the tire pressures only. Uh, to differentiate from the tire pressures and temperatures uh, for the Magnus quality mode and of course we got the gear we're in and at the bottom this is the biggest uh, difference so we have a, a delta bar so it can show you uh, where are you gaining or are you losing time very nicely So next we are going to talk about the setups. So this car has come with six setups and the baseline setup itself. Those six are just basically low downforce, medium downforce and high downforce configuration. And moreover, they have of course the sprint setup and the endurance setup for each downforce configuration. And that makes up the six setups. As usual, at the tires and aero part of the setup, we can change the pressure, starting pressure of all four tires, as well as the aero balance. Uh, we can change the wing setting here as well. Moving on, we got the chassis part. At the front, we got we can change the R blade, the outer diameter, a diameter toe in, front and rear master cylinder, and the and uh, the brake pads of course in terms of the in-car dials we can of course change brake bias traction control thr throttle shape engine map abs and different lights just different preferences uh towards yourself moving on we can change the spring perch offset springs damping camber and caster at the front while at the rear we can change basically the same thing uh as the front except uh, we can change toe in uh, instead of caster. Last uh, we can change the fuel ARB and the outer diameter configuration of sixth gear, uh, diff, diff preload and wing settings at the back. So overall I would say that it is a car that's easy to get the hang of uh, in terms of setup uh, configuration as there isn't many complicated setup changes that you can make and it's pretty easy to handle so should you buy this car um i don't think i need to say any more to be honest this car is it doesn't matter when you're uh whether you're a rookie or very experienced in i racing this car you just love it. You just love it and you're going to have fun with it 100%. It's so easy to drive and uh, it got different functions as well. Easy setup configuration uh, for rookies, of course. This is this car is basically definitely the go-to car. It's either this car or the Ferrari 4A GT3. That's the first GT3 you're going to pick up, definitely. It's basically 
impeccable, except of the brake bias that I've mentioned. Uh, just move backwards, uh, move forwards to 54%, around sort of 54%, and it will be fine. This car is, yeah, just impeccable. So that's it for my first impressions for the Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evo. I hope this can help you decide whether buying this car or not. And I hope you enjoy. Furthermore, please join my Discord server down below so you can be uh, updated if I have any intentions to host a community race in 2021, of course. Before I go, please leave a like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell and share this video. But that's it from me and I'll see you guys later. Bye!